Branding for Entertainers, episode number five. There's so many uh, entertainers out there and so many things that tell you, you know what? Well, you know, I'm just so successful. I'm just great. And you know what? That's just total verbal, virtual, and your visual brand, why do they matter so much as an entertainer, as a performer, as a model, as an actor, as a comedian, as a ventriloquist, all those different things. You're listening to the Branding for Entertainers podcast, where we talk about your visual, verbal, and virtual brand and why it matters. Podcast helps entertainers grow and become someone that your clients and audience remember long after your gig is over. And now, here's your host, Billy Diamond. Hello, my name is Billy Diamond, and welcome to another episode of Branding for Entertainers. It's hard to believe that I started the Branding for Entertainers podcast last year, derailed, and guess what, though? We're back. And I say we're back because I'm with uh, my very special guest, and also my son who is ryan diamond ryan diamond and ryan you know what's crazy about this is i actually started our podcast i was going to go into episode four episode four is now an update but i was going to go into the podcast talking about uh something that you treated me to last summer do you remember what that was you treated me to something very special uh, yep. last summer you, what, what, what was that tell tell everyone what, what you treated me to i uh, i wound up treating my dad to uh um journey and def leopard at the hershey giant center which was just an amazing concert so a concert with journey and def leopard in hershey pennsylvania um, I was totally surprised, and I started to have the episode. I, I had the lead in, and I was t- I talked about how how Journey is uh, just a classic brand, how Def Leppard is a classic brand of of those of my generation of the '80s. But guess what? That 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 goes into your generation it, too, exactly. right? So you were just like, hey, yeah, I'm not only going to do this for you, but I'm going to do this for me, right? It, yeah, because yeah. It, it crosses barriers, it crosses oh, totally. age. Um, anyhow, I lost that episode. It's crazy. So wow. I, you know, that was another thing that happened is I kind of gave up on everything because of the fact that, um, you know, you, you do all that work. A podcast is not easy. I mean, it, it's a lot of work. And that's another reason that uh, the guests that are listening have not heard from me is because it requires a lot of time. And uh, I'm sure you could probably tell them a little bit about me. And that's that I'm not going to do anything uh, half. Yeah. Half. That's great. Thank sorry, you, son. Thank you, son. That. Thank you for swearing. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, um, I was trying to fill in the gaps. <laughs> <laughs> filling in the gaps. So, yeah. so anyway, so, you know, my goal for this episode, and um, I, I really miss this. I really, uh, as you know, I enjoy branding. What am I? I'm, a, I'm like a branding geek, right? I, yeah, am, it, yeah. Right. I mean, I really am. Pre- pretty much. I mean, I, it, <laughs> it, for, for those that are tuning in, it, trust me, my dad is um, he, very intelligent when it comes to branding. I hear about branding probably, I think, more mm. times a day than I can actually count. And, and more than you even care to know, right? Uh, well, You're like, honestly, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of busy. I need to go do my thing now. Yeah, I'll be like texting or whatever, <laughs> social media. And he'll just be like, Ryan, how does this sound? I'm just like, it's great, Dad. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm quite the branding geek. And not everybody gets into branding like myself. But that's why I do what I do because I think it's so important that entertainers learn how to brand. But what I've realized is not everybody gets exci- as excited about it as I do. Maybe they just <laughs> don't care. And, and that's okay too. But uh, that's why I exist because I really strongly feel what, what have I told you all of your life? Just like in a general sense. Yeah. As far as learning and things like that, what have I always told you? The biggest thing that you've taught me is to always focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses, and that's the key to success is being able to focus on those strengths. And that is totally it. And I didn't cue Ryan on that where, in fact, (laughs) <laughs> Let's talk about this. And for honestly, a I'm going to derail for just a second. We're not sitting in a nice, gushy studio somewhere, right? No, no. Uh, yeah, we're actually we don't have a great studio right now. We, we we don't. And 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 that and that's okay too because you use what you got, and you get better over time. And sometimes you know that has to be okay. So and you know and and let's not try to fake it to make it. I mean, I think there's so many. 
uh, entertainers out there and so many things that tell you, you know what, well, you know, I'm just so successful. I'm just great. And you know what? I, I'm going to have to do a bleep because you know what? That's just total <laughs> is what that is. And that's why not just be you, right? Yeah. So let's just tell them, hey, right now we are in a room under a cover so that the sound quality is actually better into a lavalier microphone until I get to my next step and buy a decent mic and uh, we get to a better place, right? Yep. And, and that's okay. So we're growing our audience, but more than anything, it's about content. It's about telling people, you know what, it's okay to be where you're at, but you know what, get off your and move forward, right? And that is play into your strengths, not into your weaknesses, right? Yeah, and honestly, I can I can speak fully uh, for that. Um, uh, as far as as far as the whole strengths and weaknesses go, I, I remember for the longest time, as uh, for as long as I can remember, uh, dating actually back to um, uh, my kindergarten days of being di uh, diagnosed with an IEP. And okay, and some people might not know what an IEP is, so right, you might have right. to. Expand on that uh, just a little bit. Basically, what an IEP is, it, it, it's for um, special education students um, that can go through stuff such as, um, an example, uh, I have a friend that actually has uh, autism. Okay. And, uh, do, you, do you have autism? No. No, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, no, do you, what do you have? Uh, I have what is called and is known as uh, nonverbal learning uh, okay. disorder. And basically what that entitles is I have struggles uh being able to memorize things oh it entitles you oh. is that what you're saying it, <laughs> it entitles you not to cut you off but you just said in, in, in what it entitles is it will it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it doesn't <it's>, entitle you <laughs> you know my god i have bipolar disorder and anxiety does that entitle me no oh okay all right i'm just checking <laughs> let's just keep all this real right, right here it, yeah so, we might as okay well. so um, <laughs> I, I threw you off. I hope no, you didn't lose okay. your focus. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so anyways, so basically, um, along with that, I, I, I struggle with memory. Um, I struggle with um, uh, coordination at times, uh, directions. The, the bottom line is this. So out of all the years, the things that I've really tried to teach you is what? Just play into your strengths. Know who you are as a person. You know, I think I've always told you about your 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 granddad, my 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 father. Right, right. And my father had an eighth grade education, and he can't even balance a checkbook. But my God, he's an incredible welder. The guy can the guy can weld aluminum. I would melt aluminum, <laughs> right? So, the biggest thing is this: that we all have these strengths and we have these weaknesses. And this might be a good segue for. What I really want to talk about this episode and that I would have, what I originally said in the third episode was talking about visual brand, virtual brand, and verbal brand. So, you know, that sounds like a scary thing. Like, what are the three V's of branding and why do they matter? Um, so your verbal, your virtual, and your ver – yeah, yeah, your verbal, virtual, and your visual brand, why do they matter? so much as an entertainer, as a performer, as a model, as an actor, as a comedian, as a ventriloquist, all those different things. Why does that matter? And uh, not only is this a segue, but we started this out to say that, you know, you probably don't geek out on this stuff like I do, but that's the cool thing is what am I trying to do, Ryan? I'm, I'm sincerely trying to play into my strengths you really are. by helping other entertainers and and other people in the entertainment industry to to get it right right so my job is really what to take all the hard work of it exactly out of it for them and some of that means actually doing that work and i think part of that is figuring out who they are so let's let's talk for a moment we're going to talk about the verbal visual and virtual part of branding and what exactly does it mean so let me ask you ryan you know you're around this all the time mm -hmm. but and maybe you have had to learn because that's what i taught you but but i'm also um not only am i surrounded by it every day uh like it or not which 
Which, hey, you know, that's not a horrible thing. You know, it could it really advance me one day as well. Um, hey, we can learn from anything, right? Exactly. We can learn from everybody and everything. It doesn't matter what the job is, things like that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good example. There's uh, You have all, so many of these uh, virtual celebrities out there doing stuff such as, like, YouTube and all that. Let me ask you, what, what is a virtual celebrity? While we're on that, let's talk about that real quick. First thing, or there's, like, so many different YouTubers I can I can think of off the top of my head, but my number one. So that, that would make a virtual virtual brand i i honestly or, if you okay. would ask me i i would i i, I believe mm. so uh, you know what i, I know you have because i know you've long enough you you actually have a favorite virtual i do brand i do <laughs> a favorite virtual brand and a virtual brand is basically this it's what it's it's a it's a presence online exactly and oftentimes that is what like a uh, a youtube youtube a youtuber yeah youtuber but, but let me expand on this real quick before we jump into that and that is that a uh, a virtual brand is really the essence of you, right? It's your online presence. It so, is. Yeah. so your online presence and how you talk online and how uh, you are perceived online. And let me tell you, a lot of entertainers get it wrong. Man, I, yeah. I just I shake my head sometimes with some clients. But you really have to be honest and you have to be real because that's the only way we can grow as human beings. And as artists, it's right. you, you have to just tell people that you know what, <laughs> you're you're really screwing this up. So, you know, your virtual brand is really about having some consistency, and that's not just consistency about um, uh, your website. It's about consistency with your social media presence, and kind of that's what we're talking about now is social media presence. So, so, so back to that, you have you have a brand that you favor as far as virtually. Uh, that, tell us about that. So I, I, I found this guy, I've known him for four years now, I believe. He's actually a storyteller. Uh, his name is Jesse Ridgway, uh, lives in uh, New Jersey. Uh, he goes by the YouTube name McJugger Nuggets. Basically, he just the, uh, the way he was able to portray his brand and the way he conveyed it was just so bold and just it was just completely different than um, what many others would have done let me, let me ask you this you don't know a lot about branding i talked no, to you about no, branding but you really don't know about branding branding right no so wh what makes him a brand what makes him a brand is the fact that he he goes against what others do <laughs> some brand is the fact that he he goes against what others do for example, he actually grew up, was really big into filmography and all that stuff over the years. He graduated from college. He was just, he was stuck in a, you know, nine to five. And it was then he decided, you know what, I'm going to go for uh, YouTube full time. Oh, I didn't know that. So he actually quit his he, job. He actually quit. I think he's like, I'm done. He, he was, I'm done. He was actually working, I think it was both mm. a plumbing job for a couple years. And then for another couple years, he was doing a bank job. And he basically just called it quits and said, you know what? God, I'm doing really... I'm, I'm doing YouTube. I just got to do it, whatever it takes. You know, it's funny. I, I did not know that about him, but uh, I can totally relate to that. The jobs that I had out of many years of wanting to be a performer, entertainer, magician, and just said, you know what? Screw it. I quit. <laughs> to, like, look back on that and not have a plan is, like, a really bad thing. But anyhow, so, so somehow in the midst of that, though, he became wildly successful. Yeah, and I mean, at first, it, you know, he had his whole family and even his father, you know, who was just completely old world, just saying, like, oh, you know, you can't do YouTube full time. You got to get a regular job, all this and that. But he was just like, no, I'm going to sincerely do this. And... Um, mm -hmm. He basically, in that process, was able to learn what his audience wanted. Ah, he, man, that's that's a key. And and that's you that, have to know what your audience e exactly. Wants. And wow. he, he figured okay, out. And, and listen, guys, I, I don't, and I haven't not coached Ryan on any of this. This is all personal. Yeah, this is all <laughs> a personal experience. Okay. So what did you just say? He uh, had to learn what he had to learn basically for himself uh, what his audience wanted as opposed to what it was. That, <laughs> wow! That wow! Listen to doing. that, guys. Listen really close to that. As a performer, what is it that your audience wants? Listen, what I've noticed, especially with magicians, they're like, "Hey, I want this trick because this is cool and I like it." And it's not really about that, is it? It's about no. you, you find your audience and you find what they want, what they need, and how you can help them. So continue. He found his audience and what he wanted. Yeah, and he did the series for the better part of, I think, two and a half years at least. And it was actually a series based on his actual life, and he portrayed it as real. Um, 
and it was actually a thing of... Uh, so it's like a character series, though. B- basically, yeah. It was a okay. character series. His family was involved. Him as the main character was about his dad wanting him to get a job and all that stuff, and he was basically the rebel. He was all about doing YouTube full-time, being a, a pro gamer so stuff, he. Uh, so long story short, he, he said, I will do this. I'm going to do this. Exactly. Let me ask you this. From his virtual brand standpoint, so the three Vs of branding... Visual, verbal, and virtual. So from a virtual standpoint, that was the only way anybody knew him, right? Was exactly. Was online. Yeah. Okay. And what did his audience start out as? Uh, like how many Like how many people? Any idea? Um, I was a little late on it because his video was kind of trending at that time. And he, I think, had maybe about a couple, eight 8,000 subscribers. And, okay. Uh, so wait, how many? I think I think it was a little over eight thousand subscribers. Over eight thousand, you know, that's nothing to sneeze at. I wish as a magician I'd have eight thousand subscribers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, um, you know, and you know, let's just be real. I mean, that's that we are where we're at, and that's okay. And I think it's important to grow things organically. And I yeah. think knowing what I know about him is he kind of did that. Uh, how many subscribers does uh, does McJugger Nuggets have he, today? Any idea? He's at three, a, he's at three point seven, uh, cutting close to four million. Almost four million subscribers, and is nearly with his a couple years into his virtual YouTube career. Now, you know, as entertainers, I don't know. That's that's a rough thing to do that, but it is possible. With uh, let me ask you this, and I want to make sure I get this right. As far as his virtual brand, what do you think made that? You're here again. You don't know a lot about branding, but so right. let's talk to my audience. Let's speak to that for a moment. For you, why why do you tune into him? Why do you what what makes us so excited? How does he connect with you? It, he connects with me primarily through his stories, and his stories gear more towards um, given the fact that he talks on a lot of heavy topics, such I such as uh, he's talked about. He's touched on uh, divorce through his series. He's touched on uh, many heavy topics such as suicide, drugs, and alcohol. So and, so things that and, so so. Th- Things that are relatable, exactly. Right. Thanks. So, or things that of are of interest. Now, you said something, and you kept on saying it a couple of times, and that is story. Right. Now, I'm a big uh, man. When it comes to branding, I'm a big believer in story, and I'm a big believer that if you can convey your story to your audience. You are so much further ahead. I listen to guys like Donald Miller and Story Brand, and they talk about you know Story's been around for a long time, and yeah. and how you can take that and you know if you can pull people into the story of your brand. Here again, you know, as entertainers, we become uh, what do I want to say. We I, let's just call it what it is. We're we're uh, some of us are uh, egotistical. Right. Yeah. yeah I try not to be, but you know, as a, as an artist, as an entertainer, there's still that part of us that hey, we have a little bit of an ego, right? So it's really easy to talk about us, 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 us. Right. 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 But I think it's really important to tell the story and make a connection with our virtual brand. Man, I was gonna like go into the verbal and the visual part of branding. But we're almost out of time at this point. We only tapped into the virtual. So let's – we're going to kind of wrap this up. Okay. And we'll come back to the visual and we'll come back to the verbal in other episodes. But let's just kind of wrap this up. So he hooked you by basically what? Story? By basically storytelling and I mean – and the cool part was in a sense like originally I thought his series was actually real much like many people. And it's crazy because like – But it, And I'm sorry not to cut you off but his story and his whole episode with YouTube was not real. It, right? it, it was it not real. It ended up being total – and his, his biggest fear of all that was people's reactions because his main goal was ma- mainly just to tell a story and to help people. And there, there would be so many people saying, like, oh, he's a scammer. His whole family's a scam. What was what was his reason for doing that? Can I ask you that? So, wh- like, for why the series? Did, yeah, why did he bull everybody? Why didn't he just be real? Honestly, it was a thing Any of, idea? like, he was trying to tell a story, and it was mainly just a thing of, like, uh, there was a lot of videos of people destroying electronics trending over the Internet for, like, a lot of years, and... <laughs> through, through, through. <laughs> I remember the, the 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 the. I remember the guy that shot the girl. That was actually that, that was actually part of his inspiration. I mean, <laughs> that, he had, was it was it, it really? That wow. was that, wow. he, that was actually another. Was that, it, that was a total. total
story, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, right. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. So. But um, but yeah, I mean, he he totally had everybody hooked, and it was mainly just a thing of you know trying to tell a story of you know a character that had a very dysfunctional family. But but it it pulled you in. It it yanked me in, you know. Okay. And, and honestly, it gave me a lot of tools and a lot of things to use in regards to uh, my own life, whether that's you know, film, speaking, and honestly, there's a, just a lot of takeaways from it. So let me ask you this: so out out of all that. So you listened to the first episode of of uh, McJug and Nuggets, then you got hooked. Right. Was the can you figure out a breaking point for you on a virtual standpoint? So here again, you've never met him. The right. only way you know him was through his virtual brand. Right. So his online presence. Right. And let me preface this also and say that not everybody, not every entertainer or model or comedian. Um, ventriloquist, any type of entertainer or performer type does not necessarily have to have a YouTube channel. It helps, right. but even their online presence and how they talk to the general public and how they make a connection with them is is so important, right? Right. So what was it for you as somebody who doesn't really know branding? What was it? Where was the – so you listened to the first episode. What What kind of sucked you in and what was the – what was the point where you're like, oh, my God, I'm really hooked on this guy and I can't get enough? What what made you feel – there was a at, – at some point, there was a point where you felt like you could make a connection. And really, I guess that's what right. I'm trying to say to guys and girls uh, who are performers and entertainers is, is how do you make that connection? So uh, what was it for you? What, what, what made that connection that you well, were like, oh, my gosh, I really like this guy? F- for me, it did take a little bit because as his videos were trending, I, I checked him out. I was like, okay, you know, who is this guy? And I checked out his, you know, YouTube page. And one of his videos was, you know, it was a, he was promoting his account saying, you know, subscribe to me for this and that. You don't want to miss this. And I'm thinking in my mind, okay, you know, maybe this guy's just a typical YouTuber. But I learned along the way that he's really not a typical YouTuber. And he just he's a really genuine an awesome guy and for me i would have to say the big hook was um when he was doing i think at least two to three uploads a day and a lot of it was just um condensed and like he would actually do a bunch of mini series as well and they would have like a different theme to what part of the series was and a lot of it was uh and it would be like i said themed out completely differently each time um there was always some sort of hook there's always some sort of uh, conflict, whether it was between him or his dad, or between one of him and his family members, or whoever, etc. So, would you say that you were able to relate to it because you felt? And here again, I don't want to put words in your mouth, okay? Right. right. But would you say that it was because you felt? Here again, you felt that he was 100% genuine and real, even though he wasn't, because he was right. the whole time in his stories, right? While but, he, while he was, yes, um, and the, and the crazy part was like, I mean, there, there's a fine line here between him. I mean, he was a different kind of character on right, YouTube. So, right. so what he does is storytelling, and it doesn't matter if it's fiction or nonfiction, right? Right. But somehow you fell into the fact that you felt he was real, right? And is there a part where you actually heard him as a person outside of the storytelling that made you feel like, oh, my God, he's a real person that I can relate to? And honestly, I think what it boils down to me is like, I mean, I mean, he's even said whether that's whether that's been in his uh, behind the scenes after every series he's done or just in general. Like, I can tell by the tone of his voice, like he genuinely cares about his fans and he genuinely like means what he says even though like whether he's you know saying it on camera or not like i just i get that vibe from him like like this guy is how important is that to you as a uh as a person that listens to somebody like that how important is that that they are uh, like you you feel that that they are 100 percent real and it's not just some bull crap they're trying to feed you to get you to buy something or, you know, in this right. case, my entertainer friends who might want to buy a sh- – you know, they want their clients to buy a show. They want bookings. They want they want to be known. They want to be right. known by their fans. So so what what did that look like? Honestly, uh, th- throughout his series, uh, 
people would actually send him money. They would send him like uh, Jeez, gaming I want consoles. People, uh, here, and this <laughs> yeah. is a good time for a sponsorship yeah. right now. I'm going to self promote, and that is, yeah. I need money. And, sure, why not? <laughs> and you guys can send me money. How about that? That's great. He would actually awesome. he would he would tell his uh, he would tell all his fans. <laughs> Um, uh, during the series, he would he would say, you know, don't send me money, don't send me this. I want to see fan art, this and that. And he would actually take that money or whatever that they gave him, and actually do like giveaways, like console giveaways and all that stuff. And he was basically giving back to his community that was supporting wow. him. And That's... honestly, that that was that was one of the things that brought me in. And then because he was giving back, the the fact that he was giving back. And... All right, guys, listen to that. Listen, listen. This is coming from a non-brander. My son, who is not a branding guru or geek like myself, and the cool part about that is like it, not not even the giveaways. Like even after his series ended, like I saw him doing collabs with people, and just the fact that like and when I mean collabs, I mean like for yeah, other, expand, other, other, expand you, on that for us old people who like don't <laughs> understand like all that. And what I mean by uh, collabs, collabs is like other <laughs> YouTubers that aren't known, like. Struggled just as much as he did when he was, you know, trying to really make his big break. Okay. And to me, I, I thought that was very professional of him. The fact that he had made it to nearly one million by the time he was midway through a series. You know, staying humble. Staying humble. So, and so that's another key: is to stay humble. Stay humble. I like that. I like that approach. And I think I need to wrap it up. But you know, you heard a lot of things, and we will come back to the visual as well as the verbal, and we will talk about that a little bit more a little bit later. But one of the things that I do want to just wrap up with is this. is So really, it's about connection. It's about keeping it real. Exactly. Okay? And I, I guess that's what I'm taking away from what you're saying is just keep it 100% real. Just be you. Exactly. And so no, no different than what I've... Uh, uh, really tried to instill in you. No different than what I've always said all along as a dad, and that is, you know, just just be 100% real. We don't have to fake this. And I'm sorry, but there are so many entertainers out there right now that try to fake it. They try to pretend to be somebody they're not. They try to get people on their side because they're like, hey, look how much success I've had. Listen, we are under a blanket right now shooting this podcast and at the same time, I've had success in 65 countries around the globe as far as products. So, listen, we all have strengths. We all have weaknesses. The bottom line is this. Just be real. That's okay. So, listen, uh, we will be back. Ryan, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me on this podcast. Thanks for having me. And you know what? I think, uh, hey, how about we continue this with the uh, visual and the uh, – um, verbal I'm totally uh, down. episode and, and we'll come back to this and uh, uh, I really appreciate everybody listening and Ryan I really appreciate you being on this episode and, nice sharing, and sharing a little bit about you and uh, we were not sponsored by Mick Jugger Nuggets on YouTube no. but, uh, <laughs> but uh, he's at uh, almost 4 million 4 million later. and guess what I can guarantee you it's not just about on his storytelling he might be a great storyteller but his uh, character speaks for a lot. Your character speaks for a lot. And I think that's so important that, you know what, just be real. I do want to mention that if people need help with their virtual brand, visual brand or verbal brand, that they can indeed reach out to me. Just say hi. Listen, I just believe it's really important to breathe into the life of other people. And it's not always about money. I, and I've told you that, right, Ryan? Yeah. It's, it's not always about money. It's about breathing life into other people, using our strengths to affect and infect other people. So, again, my name is Billy Diamond, and I'm with my co-host today. Ryan Diamond. <laughs> Ryan Diamond. And we will be catching up with you real soon. I want you to stay tuned because we have some awesome things in store outside of just our next episodes of the visual and the verbal part of branding. I will be introducing – are you ready for this, Ryan? Yep. Nobody knows this yet. Not even you. Uh, I will be introducing a guest on my episode who will be a mystery guest during a segment, and it's going to be really cool because 
you have to guess who the character is as their story unfolds and all of a sudden we get to the results and guess what they talk about how they became a household name and a huge brand cool very cool. They can't see your expression on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I could. You were like, hmm, that sounds good. That sounds that does, good. Yeah. So anyway, so they'll want to stay tuned for that. So anyhow, thank you so much again, Ryan. And again, my name is Billy Diamond. Thank you so much. And be sure to join me real soon for the next episode of Branding for Entertainers. Take care. Bye-bye.